I wanted to see if I could just fire up the Reddit challenge thing right quick because there was this Reddit challenge. The the regular mode was 120 seconds to a stable orbit. Um, the hard mode was 80 seconds to a stable orbit. We've been pretty, we've been doing pretty good with our design. Um, we were doing okay. I don't know if uh, the state that I saved it in was correct, but let's go ahead and get it to be daytime. Where's my warp to next morning? There you go. Warp to next morning. Go. All right. So there we are. We're warped to the next morning. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch it from the launch pad just because I want to see how big this thing is and in order to do that I need to load it into the VAB first I can give a quick tour of the ship that we use to get to orbit ridiculously quickly It's my dialed cannon 46 seconds uh, The auto saved ship and it's not a ship at all. It is a cannon. It is a projectile sort of design Come on. There you go. So let's get that thing nice and in the middle In fact, we start off by dragging it all the way to the top of the VAB to miss as much of the no I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that that's ridiculous, and it would be shameful to do that. Um, I'll just leave it right here in the middle of the pad. And it looks like it's centered enough for government work, at least. Maybe it goes this way a little bit. You can hold down shift, and you can left-click apart and move the entire thing instead of having to grab the root node. But the way that this thing works, there's a big, massive base. You can see all the fuel tanks on it. Um, it's derived from the landing leg cannon technology. So when we were working on the, uh, the mass driver system for our science return capsules, using the new science return part, right? You get the little science container part. We're trying to come up with a system that we could return those from the surface of the moon back to Kerbin in a complete dumb fire projectile situation where you use the new uh, deploy when safe shoot setting um, on a completely unpowered, uncontrolled capsule. You put your science experiments into the experiment storage unit here, you put two drug shoots on it, and you fire it back to Kerbin as a completely dumb projectile. It enters the atmosphere, it slows down, the shoots are already staged, so the shoots actually deploy when it's safe for them to deploy, and it lands safely and you recover your science, right? So over the course of attempting to get the thing home, we accidentally decoupled a part that was being touched by a deployed landing leg. So we had a little bit of a situation. Is my pen working? Yes. Okay. Come on. Erase. I am going to have to figure out why my eraser's not working, y'all. There. I Usually when I flip this thing over, it erases, and it's not doing that. Um, but we had, actually, a little bit of a fuel tank with a docking port on the bottom of it and a main structure, and we had one of the little landing legs, right, deployed, pressed up against that thing, and just accidentally, one day, um, we undocked these two docking ports when that landing leg was touching the side, and this thing went a kilometer in this direction, completely on accident. Welcome and that's when we discovered that uh, the deployed landing leg will actually exert a force on a part if it's uh, docked into the craft and then you decouple it, as soon as it decouples the landing like instantaneously imparts a force on the uh, part that it's touching and throws it at like a ridiculous amount of distance. So from there we've, been, we've created all sorts of designs. We've got like a cannon that we've used to fire at the island runway. Um, we've got the cannon that we fire smart projectiles into orbit. From the surface of Kerbin we fired a projectile that went all the way up to an apple of like 80 and then the projectile actually had a probe core and, and the, the ability to create some delta v had fuel tanks had an engine and it could actually circularize we sent a projectile on a free return trajectory around the moon using that um, we've created an orion drive that shoots a mass out the back of the ship insanely fast therefore imparting a, a equal not equal and opposite i guess but a little bit of delta v to the main ship itself um, we've just we've had a lot of funs with this design uh, using landing leg technology and so when we saw the reddit challenge we wanted to see if we couldn't uh, use the landing leg cannon to uh, progella, pro, propel a, a trajectory. Man, I can't even talk. Propel a trajectile. That's not right. Propel a projectile um, into orbit as fast as possible. Um, the regular mode was to get it under, what was it, uh, 120 seconds. Hard mode was 80 seconds. We've shaved some time off that. A little bit of time. We can go a little bit faster than that. Uh, because we are violating the laws of physics by instantaneously imparting 700 meters per second of delta V to the craft at the time of launch. Um, so, you can see down here we've got our landing leg cannon, which really just consists of 40 landing legs. I think we've got 40 in this one. I'm not sure exactly how many. Um, we've got quite a few landing legs in there. Um, placed in 8x symmetry. I think I've got five layers of the largest landing legs in 8x symmetry um, inside of the structural fuselage, pointing up at a docking port. And the important thing here, you can see the there's the bottom docking port here, right? You can kind of see right there, you got the, the separation between the docking ports like that. There's a docking port there, then there's the other docking port like that. 
Um, we've got those docking ports in there. And the important thing is that this little end of the barrel, you see the end of the landing leg barrels like that? The most important thing is that that little end of the barrel originates in the docking port that is on the main launcher, right? It's down, it's connected via node to the structural fuselage here. Um, the important thing is that that little pipe, the end of the docking port, the end of the piston sort of like container um, for the landing leg originates inside of that docking port. And then you have the other docking port. This docking port actually kind of acts as like a Sabo sort of thing. Not exactly, but it's almost a pusher plate um, for the projectile. And what we do is we undock these two docking ports, freeing this projectile up so that it is a separate craft that just so happens to be in the way of 40 landing legs. And the landing legs don't like having things in their way, so they instantaneously impart an addition, like a ridiculous amount of energy to it, um, pushing the projectile. In fact, it pushes the projectile so fast, it destroys the docking port back here and just leaves us with this kind of double fairing projectile. So we've got a fairing pointing backwards, a fairing pointing forwards, um, actually two fairings pointing forwards. Um, we've got an ore canister in there. The ore can is actually full because I want some mass in this projectile. Um, so that it can push its way through the atmosphere. You don't want a very aerodynamic but very light projectile because a light projectile would be more susceptible to slowing down due to drag, right? The heavier the projectile, the less it's going to slow down when it's tearing through the atmosphere. Um, Hedge Zero, by the way, thanks for the 22 months. I, I missed that uh, while I was doing the explanation there. 22 months is the high score for someone of the stream, and we're rapidly approaching that 24 months. Um, so we've got the projectile here, right? Um, and then up on the front of it, We've got another docking port. We've got more landing legs. I believe there's only two sets of eight landing legs, so 16 landing legs in here, pointing at a fairing base that has a probe core on it, and in the very middle is a command chair. Uh, that's where our Kerbal rides, because the vessel has to be manned for the Reddit challenge. And uh, that's the long and short of it. All these tanks are to increase the mass of the launcher, because the mass of the launcher increases the power of the landing legs. We think that it has something to do with landing legs uh, increasing their force based on the mass of your vessel so that they help cushion the landing it's some bit of code that's like in the background that we don't we don't really know exactly what the code is supposed to do um, but we think that it has something to do with increasing the power of the landing legs based on the mass of the le the vessel that they're trying to uh, land or support and then up here, we've got the landing legs pushing on this. Again, this is massive, so we've got all the ore in there, and that's going to help put even more energy into the little Kerbal in the command chair. This right here is probably going to get kicked so hard it explodes is what we think is going to happen. What we think is going to happen, we did this a couple times yesterday. So let me just move it up off the ground a little bit. Uh, let's put it, I'll save it here in the VAB, and make sure we got a Kerbal. Do we have a Kerbal? Nope, not Jab, let's put Val in there. There's Val, all right, save it and launch it and again i am recording this video for the reddit challenge um and i'm live right now as well so everybody's like man why is he not talking to us i'm trying to get through this uh, explanation pretty quickly here y'all um and then we will go back over and play with the grand tour vessel magellan the 800 part count uh grand tour vessel that can refuel itself and uh <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole other story let's not talk about that right now so we'll go ahead and eva val we will tell val to climb over and through uh kerbal phasing technology have her magically move herself through the fairing into the command chair. She's now sitting in the command chair, so the vessel is in fact boarded. She doesn't have a lot of head room in there. Um, can I aim the camera on her? Yes, I can. Okay, so she doesn't really have that much room. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if we can look around, it's, it's basically just a fairing. And yes, yeah, see, there, that's it. Now, normally we would never launch an astronaut in this. This is one of the questions I asked of United Launch Alliance when I had him on the stream. Um, inside of a fairing in the real world is a, is a high vibration, high energy environment. In fact, fairings have to be designed with certain damping characteristics to protect the satellites that are on board. Um, they don't just protect the satellite from airflow and heat, they also protect it from vibrations um, as well. So we would not launch an astronaut like this. Profiler with a 22 munch as well. Yes, yes, we did not put a magical antenna on the top. I have no place to mount a magical antenna, um, given that the fairing is there. So, this is our setup. There are probably not many others like it, um, but this one's mine. And all we have to do to fire this thing, let's go ahead and control from here as well. There you go, control from there. Now, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get this done on the first time, but I know that I can do it in 46 seconds is the fastest that I've done it. Um, so, I may do it in 47 or 48 seconds. Uh, just to make sure that I get it on the first time and I don't have to do it multiple times since I've done such a fantastic job of the intro. Just kidding. Uh, can I reset the camera? It's interesting that there's no like reset camera just off the top of everything, right? You have to point in the same part that's already focused and go. 
Anyway, so we've got Val in there. We've got the trajectile. We're good to go. We don't have a launch window. We just basically go whenever we want to. So I'm going to F5 for safety. Let's lock the panel. We only have five electric charge on this. Oh, no, we have 305 electric charge on the main base, but I think the top part should only have five electric charge, if I remember correctly. And we're just going to uh, say three, two. I press one when I want to go. We're not using staging at all here. I'm just going to press the one key, and we've got the undocking of that docking port right there, action grouped. And here's what it looks like. Three, two, one. One again, I guess. <laughs> I'm out, nerds. You can see the little poofs there. Those are from the uh, parts going away. We lost the uh, tail cone. We lost our fins. Those were ablative fins. They actually blow up at a very specific time because we want them to get rid of just enough heat that the top part of this vessel maintains. Um, we are still flying like crazy. We lost our tail cone. We lost all of our fins. That was as designed. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Make sure I'm nice and level. I can't use my electric charge. All right, 50. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Let's start the turn. This way, start the turn. And I need to point about 30 degrees under the horizon, like 28 degrees is where it's at. There we go, 70 and two. That's about 47, 48 seconds. Let's check the orbit and see if we got it. <laughs> Val is having a good time here. Um, she instantly went to orbital velocity because of the upper landing leg cannon. Um, survey says 70 by 500. So that right there, call it 47, call it 48 seconds. Um, I can probably get it done a little bit faster than that. The fastest we did yesterday was 46 seconds uh, by the clock. At this rate, <laughs> I think I'm just going to go with, uh, we'll call it 47 seconds for that one. Uh, between 47 and 48 seconds. But Val is good to go. 70 by 536. Now we talked. We did talk about, uh, we talked about dialing those upper landing legs down just a little bit because I can tune this um, to circularize the orbit. I can do it so perfectly like tuned that we'll go into a 70 by 70 orbit by firing at a very specific angle at a very specific altitude. I don't think that I'm going to, uh, I don't think that I'm going to go through that right now. Um, I'm, I want to play with my GTV Magellan vessel is really what I want to do on this stream. But I did want to do a quick recording at the beginning of the stream here so I could find it easily and cut it out as a VOD and upload it to Reddit and keep my current Reddit flair because I like my current Reddit flair better. Um, anyways, I know that I can get this into a circular orbit because we actually used the Orion Drive and we did a check ride around the moon. Not only did we get a trajectory uh, encountering the moon, we actually circularized at the moon using the Orion Drive so that I, kn I know how to dial these landing leg cannons in. And I'll do this for you right quick as well. Look, check it out. Val, stop spinning! It is what it is. I can definitely shoot a Kerbal to the moon. I can shoot things at the island runway. I can hit buildings. I can fire projectiles so fast that they phase through buildings and ships and things. Um, I fired it from an SSTO. I fired it from a moving ship. I have put it on a tank and rolled the tank backwards down the runway, given the energy of the projectile. Um, I made an orbital cannon that could fire things at 50 kilometers per second. Yes. If you want to know about something I've done with landing leg cannons, the answer is yes, I have done it. I have done tons. We did. We got an accidental Minmus encounter last night. We actually fired just randomly from a Kerbin orbit and ended up at Minmus. Let me show you right quick. If you're interested in building your own landing leg cannon, I can show you.